Go ahead, we can hear you. Corporations like Starbucks um, that are international and that have a lot of power and money have a, a much larger advantage in marketing and, um, and taking up our, our space in culture and um, as a result end up dominating largely how our culture perceives reality. So the, the philosophy is that um, there are ways to, to combat that. There are ways to provide alternatives to that kind of, um, and there are ways with the internet to gather as a community, let, you know, let other voices, that the, the target for, you know, anyone who's looking for an alternative. Starbucks has bought out some very good chains, and they will continue to do that. They are the big bully on the specialty block. There's no question about that. Uh, they're very good at what they do, and they're going to keep doing it. <laughs> you have two of the greatest noses in the entire country right here. These are people that we How consider... How much is your nose insured for? Uh, <laughs> his nose is featured on my Pete's frequent drinker card. I mean, it's it's so important that this is what you see, Jim's nose. Mm -hmm. George is looking for individual traits that he thinks could indicate a great single coffee. That's his passion. Whereas Jim, his blends are a legend. He's like a, a symphonic conductor. In a world where the rich are getting richer and the poor poorer, there will always be a future in catering to the refined tastes of the true connoisseur. For those seeking the perfect cup today, there is no contest as to which is the finest coffee. It's Ethiopia's Yerga Chefi. This is a very subjective thing. So one person's favorite doesn't mean it's the best, even if it's George. So, but the thing is that we all did, you know, as a consensus, we did agree that number one had the qualities that made it an excellent cup of coffee, like that perfect peach that it's very round. explodes. Well round. Exactly. Yeah. So it's got that roundness, but all the acidity is there too, but it's perfectly cradled by, by everything else and the flavors in it. And to me, that's worth anything you can pay for. Wow, I think we're in danger of a real bifurcation in the market again. Because all these people are still purveying really good quality. And I think many more people are aware of it now. But the baseline of quality that is found in supermarket cans might well get lower. I, I agree with Corby. We're going back towards the commodification of coffee. You've got three years now of prices that are so low that the majority of farmers, even in good locations producing good quality, are getting way below the cost of production. The availability of quality coffees is going to diminish. I don't think that we have to worry because there is now a coffee consumer developing an understanding about the second largest traded commodity in the world after oil. You know, nobody says, well, my oil smells good, or my gas has this wonderful essence or aroma. We are dealing with a product that we are trying to lighten, to provide a crossover, a heritage to the tradition of wine. That's last year's 4.95. The debate here is not about quality of coffee but about whether our growing appreciation is sufficient to conserve the supply of quality beans. Will there be enough people who regard coffee as a fine wine or the ingredient of a gourmet meal? Je pense qu'il y a des points communs entre le vin et le café. Euh, souvent on dit que le café est un excitant, mais le vin est un excitant aussi. Un jour, euh, on a même osé euh, faire une crème de coquille Saint-Jacques, une charlotte de crabe comme ici, etc. On s'est aperçu qu'en associant le, un café chaud, on est arrivé à des accords tout à fait étonnants. 
L'idée n'était pas de dire on va éliminer le vin, on va servir que du café, non pas du tout. C'était surtout d'annoblir le café et vraiment de lui redonner une place, non pas à la fin du repas, mais dans le repas et sur la table. C'est ça, c'était l'objectif. À l'origine, le café s'appelle le vin d'Arabie. Le vin d'Arabie se déguise dans un verre. Les Arabes boivent le café dans un verre. Donc, sans s'en apercevoir, on n'avait pas inventé quelque chose, mais on était en train de lui donner une dimension différente. Monsieur Café, vous êtes à votre place, à l'honneur sur la table. Coffee lovers alone cannot bear the burden of bringing about a just relationship between producer and consumer. Activists worldwide are appealing to big government and the big four to follow the sustainable path taken by the specialty revolution. When people open their morning newspaper tomorrow, hopefully then they're drinking their morning coffee, they'll have a bit of a think about it. This is about the whole world coffee market not working. And so we're really looking for them to support the Oxfam campaign, to, to take Nestle and Kraft, and we can get um, the powerful governments to actually take action to, to alleviate some of the suffering. Excuse me, I've got that fuel. One of the recent campaigns we've been working on is to pressure the leading U.S. Uh, retailers of coffee to adopt fair trade standards. It's going to be a much harder campaign. Um, they're not nearly as susceptible to consumer pressure as Starbucks was. And they buy the worst quality coffee in the market. Unfortunately, consumers are contributing to the problem because we don't know about the situation. And so we keep buying coffee from these terrible coffee companies. Nobody gets up in the morning and says to themselves, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and I want to make sure that I'm exploiting farmers and polluting the environment. Nobody says that. Yet unwittingly, we are contributing towards massive environmental devastation and exploitation in terms of taking food off the table of farmers when we buy coffee that's not sustainable. And it's really our choice. As this ancient bean finally reaches the northern consumers who can delight in the pleasure of their coffee, the hope is that the quality of the bean, the quality of the environment in which it grows, and the quality of life of the farmer who grows it may all just come together in the perfect cup. Going to Ethiopia, we started out across the savannah. And there were lots of people walking. There was hut after hut, round huts. I noticed that there weren't pit toilets. There weren't wells. I had little girls come up to me and hold my hand. And they pulled me into the hut of their mother. And when I looked at that woman, I knew the love she had for her girl, her daughter. I knew she wanted for her daughter what I wanted for the daughter you met. She brewed coffee out of very dirty water that she had hauled up from a stream four hours away. She boiled it over a little stove in a coffee pot. It had coffee that she had pestle and murdered. What she was serving me in that cup was the world's finest coffee. She was serving me Yerga Chefe. Chefi, in the birthplace of coffee, is one of the finest coffee-growing regions in the world. Here, farmers have started the first Ethiopian fair trade cooperative.
They hope that by forming this cooperative, they can provide the basic needs for their families, keep their culture and their community together, and realize the dream of a better future for their children. Get up. 